my name is Jeffrey Sharberg, and today I want to share with you a story about someone that I've gotten pretty close to. Hey Tom, you there? Tom? Alright, well I'm coming over with the camera, so uh, get ready. And I just need to locate <laughs> where the hell I put it. I had a I had glass a big glass breakage in here last night under the table there. And I set the plans over here. And then I reorganized this stuff a little bit. I just gotta figure out where they put them. Then I had the booklet here to put them in this book so they wouldn't get lost. They were they were like right up here. They're not in here. I didn't put them in the printer because I didn't have the printer on. Son of a bitch. What the hell did I do with them? Oh, look at there on a the clipboard right here. Did you see? I, I put them here so that you would see my write up on Leonardo DiCaprio's Beach House. Because here's the LA Times article that I did, that we did. I was the interior, one of the interior carpenters. This, this was front page of the real estate section. This shows uh, DiCaprio sells Malibu Beach House compound for a titanic price. This is that table I was talking about earlier from San, that went to San Luis Obispo. And it's uh, four feet across, 24 inch from center radius. And it has a very unique look to it uh, with the legs being giant posts that all intersect three. So uh, it looks wobbly, but it's very stable. So there we have it. And if I grab a pencil and uh, that should do it. We'll go out to my shop. It's a little unorganized. So if you, if you bear with the unorganization of it, we'll get there. This is Tom Collins. Now, before we get started, there are a couple things that you need to know about Tom. Tom is a carpenter with at least 40 years of experience under his belt. Okay, we're putting the fence on the saw in order to cut down the legs for the table. That, that will lock. I'm putting the blade up to the proper height of the floor before. The squeak comes with age. He's worked all over the place from building ski resorts in Colorado to high-end restaurants in New York. What I do is I'm raising the jaws of this tool to surface plane the posts. Currently, Tom lives in his childhood home in the quiet city of Westchester. For the past two years, I've worked with Tom as his assistant. Take a tape and just double check all four. Everything should be equal. And over this period of time, I've gotten to know Tom pretty well. So well, in fact, that I decided to make my senior thesis a documentary about him. Tom, what are we doing today? Uh, today we're going to pick up where we left off, which is uh, how can you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all? The goal of said documentary was quite simple. Well at least in theory that is. Over the course of a couple of days, Tom and I were determined to build a table. So let's measure Jeff between that point and this point, and it should be what, 51 is our call out? 51 is a call out, yeah. Let's pull the plan back over That's here real quick. It's a table that Tom designed decades ago, and has actually built a couple of times. From the way that he talked about it, the table seemed like an ideal project to film, as the plans didn't look terribly complex. Yeah, we just want to see how how much out of whack this motherfucker is. And it's out of whack. So we're gonna go back here. Good thing we checked it. It wouldn't have cut very good. That's right on the money there. Okay, so that's good. It was complicated enough for Tom to show off some of his skills as a trained carpenter. 
but at the same time relatively simple to the point that I knew Tom and I could get this done in a day or so. Better to make it a little less because I can yeah, always a, drop it, but you can't add lumber on. Actually, this is my good side with less wrinkles, so I'm, I'm doing it on purpose, and if I... You're fine, you're fine, it's okay. your good side. <laughs> At least that's what I think it is. What we're doing here is we're getting ready to dado the cuts where the, where the two logs go together, like this. Today we are blanking out the new table legs yeah. to fit the more artistic element because Jeffrey even didn't know quite how to say it to no, me. I, yeah. He goes, ah, these are great, but let's go ahead and move on to another set of table legs that will look a little better. And I no, know that's not it. <laughs> that's not what it is, but I know that's what it is. No, what happened was, just to clarify for the camera, because Tom, Tom won't actually say this, what actually happened is that we tried doing the table legs during the first weekend of shooting and, uh, and we couldn't get it done. Uh, it was just taking too much time. And the day after we're done shooting, I go back to Tom's uh, backyard, and there it is. It's all done. Tom has it all done. He yeah, figured, but it he looks short it and chubby and so Tom, like me, because I can't walk well. <laughs> so Tom, Tom says that he can do it again by tweaking the angle. Um, I kind of believe him. I think he, he doesn't have the angle, and we're going to spend another you know several days trying to figure this out. But uh, hopefully by the end, we'll actually get this done. So we actually got two more sets of legs. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to put it for the joiner, right? Yep. To make a long story short, this table was turning into an absolute nightmare. And I cannot fully express to you all the frustrations that we encountered during construction, but perhaps the biggest problem that we faced was that Tom could never find the actual plans for the table in the first place. Last night, uh, I thought Tom was gonna send me the, uh, was gonna send me the plan for the table that we're gonna build. Uh, he did send me the plan, but apparently it's the wrong plan with the measurements. He's trying to find the right design right now, but uh, I, I really don't know if he has it or not. These preliminary drawings, I don't know if that's the accurate cut what I actually made because when we revised the plan, I know that it had dimensions on how, how high up and how high down the dado was. Right now we're working on the legs of the table uh, and they come together at what are called miter cuts. Uh, but the miter cuts are at the right, wrong angle, so there's something wrong with the design that Tom has. Oh, nice. Well, do you think we can, we can figure it out? Uh, I think I, I might be able to. I just have to take a... Because what's going to happen, if I go dead center, it's going to be equal. Yeah. It's going to be the same width at the top as the bottom. Yeah. And I want the bottom, I want it to be more cylindrical. I don't want it to be so wide. I oh, want I it to see. be pulled in so it's thinner. Best case scenario, he finds finds the actual plan in his email. Uh, worst case scenario, we spend a couple more hours trying to figure out how this uh, this table comes together. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I, I have a little bit of confidence, I guess. <laughs> All right, well, we'll give you a little bit of time to try to find it. But I really want to at least like get to work. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna get the miters going. But I, if I if I bring it up higher, what's the worst case scenario? Um, we don't finish the table. If I was to flip it. Uh, if I had it up too high, then the bottom would be narrow and the top would be wider. I think it has to go dead center now that I remember. That means are the angles my are the angles on an angle? Are the angles? It wouldn't be if they were centered. If they were centered, it'd be perfectly T squared. No, it can't be T squared. <coughs> Fuck. 
We never finished the table. In fact, we couldn't even get the legs done. Uh, now, I'm probably not the only one who will tell you this, but Tom can be a difficult person to work with. In fact, making this documentary of Tom has been a very frustrating process there. and probably one of the biggest challenges I've ever faced. You got like some kind of power tool around here. <gasps> oh, there you go. <laughs> this is what happens to get old. You, you, got, you get in the wrong line for the bus to go back to the tour, to get back to the, the, the home when you're in a retirement home. You get on the wrong bus. You don't know where you're going. You babble on stories. People don't know what the hell you're talking about. You take off your socks when you didn't need to because you're say. talking and you can't do two things at once. <laughs> this is what you can expect. It happens overnight. The transition happens right after 60. Isn't that terrible? I never really put my family first. I was always trying to prove myself, get the job, and yeah, I can do this. It was, it was, I was, I was addicted to my work. Do you um, think it's a good or a bad thing? I, I, it's, you know what it is? Be what? careful what you wish for. I'm, I'm retiring at this point in my, in my career, and it's not because I want to. It's because my feet have given out. They're yeah. collapsed. I can't go in with the, uh, the mindset that I'm not going to fall or injure myself or fall off a balcony or a ladder. There's certain things that I can and can't do. You wouldn't want to hire a blind wallpaper hanger, so you wouldn't want to hire uh, a, a staircase builder that can't stand. Yeah. It's a bit of a slap in the face because uh, I have to step down off my little podium because I can't do the work anymore. And I've, I've earned the podium I've got. And I don't, I don't want to lose it with these people. But It's funny how, how life is because it seems like there's a reason for everything that happens in your life. Like if I lose my keys and I can't get on the motorcycle to be somewhere and I'm late, it's meant to be. I'm not supposed to be in that traffic at that time or, or whatever. I'm a firm believer life is meant to be the way it is. It's meant to be that I'm not doing what I'm doing because of my feet. For some reason, God said, let there not be feet. I don't know why. I tried to discourage Jeff to get somebody else to, but he goes, no, you're a perfect candidate. I don't know why you chose me. I, I think you could have done better cho choosing a topic than me, than this basket case of a person that's at the last no. legs of his career, um, falling apart, overweight, devastated over the loss of his trade uh and i think you saw that you know why why am i so concerned with it you're probably thinking and um why make a documentary about tom the, well the unity to be honest with you i really can't answer that question right now and it's not like i haven't been thinking about this question and in, in fact it's been haunting me throughout this whole entire process for a moment consider my position after two weekends of filming at Tom's, I'm left with 186 minutes of Tom rambling, 57 minutes of Tom meandering, and 34 minutes of Tom falling asleep. And we still couldn't finish the table. Can you believe that? How do I even make a documentary about a carpenter who can't build a table? What the fuck am I doing? Why, why am I struggling so much? Well, why is it my voice? Why I hate my voice. I hate all this useless footage, and I hate having to make this all work. After we were done filming, Tom had me take the table legs and put it in a scrap pile of wood, under covers, and out of sight. There were many times throughout this project that I just wanted to take all my footage and hide it too, never to show it to anyone. That feeling is terrible. I'm ashamed, and I feel like a failure. If somebody ever asks you to do a film that you don't think you're able to do, yeah. don't turn it down. Why is that? Stumble through it, no people to call. Because when This is probably the best time to tell you that Tom actually had the right plans for the table this whole entire time. So, with this new information in mind, I invited Tom over to my backyard to complete this table and finally bring an end to a seemingly endless and painful project. As I've mentioned before, I've known Tom for quite some time, and while there are some aspects about Tom that drive me crazy, I think that this old man has taught me quite a bit. Not only what it means to be a hard worker, but how to actually have pride in the work you do, never giving up and seeing your project through to the end. Tom, you're probably not the sharpest tool in the shed, 
but you sure are the craziest motherfucker that I know. Thank you.